Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards, the video series where we take a strategic, in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today we're looking at Sea Witch. This is a 5 cost action, duration and attack card from 2nd edition Seaside. And it says, plus 2 cards, each other player gains a curse. At the start of your next turn, plus 2 cards, then discard 2 cards. So this clearly is which on the turn that you play it. It's The first two sentences are literally exactly the same thing. And then it has the duration effect of Dungeon stapled onto it. So Dungeon is a card from Adventures. We haven't covered it yet, you know, but technically Dungeon came first, right? Because this is a second edition card. So it might be easy and intuitive first of all to think of sea witch as being a witch plus it's literally witch and then it's got this bonus effect on top so it's like strictly better it's witch with a bonus but that doesn't really tell you the whole story and that is because of a fundamental part of duration cards and that is that they have a drawback you can't play them as often this is because they stay on in play between turns so sea witch is only a junking attack on the turn that you play it not on the next turn, right? You can't play it again on your next turn in order to give out a second curse. It's stuck in play between your turns. It never enters your hand. You can't, you can't play it. So if you would otherwise be able to draw and play a witch each turn, see which gives out curses at basically half the speed because you only get to play it half as much. Now, of course, this isn't always the case. Don't always have deck control yet. You know, which cards tend to be fairly high priority and you get them before you have deck control. And it might also be the case that you're never going to get deck control, right? The deck just isn't really set up or the kingdom to basically ever get clean and like draw your entire deck on any turn. However, Sea Witch, bear in mind, is also much more likely to miss the shuffle, even in the cases where you don't have deck control. And so that still reduces the amount that you play it. Right, it might not be the case that you churn through your deck slowly enough that you know Sea Witch is going to end up in the discard before you shuffle. It might miss that shuffle, and then it will be quite a long time until you see the Sea Witch again. So, which attacks they tend to be fairly high priority and they are purchased before you have deck control. Part of the reason why they are so high priority is because a nice defense against junking attacks is to give out all of the junk yourself before your opponent can give them to you, right? The junk piles are limited, curses and also, you know, the ruins pile when that's relevant. And if you can give a bunch of it to your opponents first, that's less that are available for them to give it to you. So you tend to want to get started on the junking fairly soon when you can. But Sea Witch also has an additional benefit for use against your opponent's junking attacks, and that is that it gives you a little bit of this sifting, or you maybe you call it filtering, right? The ability to draw cards and then discard past them. This sifting is good when you have junk in your deck, and so when your opponent is cursing you, giving you junk, you know, having the Sea Witch's sifting ability is nice to basically skip past those junk cards. Now, getting your own junker was already a small counter to your opponent's junking attack because of the whole, you know, giving out the junk first. So this is pretty amplified in Sea Witch, right? It's actually a much, much better card against your opponent's junking attacks than, like, your typical junking attack card is. In fact, all of this tends to mean that Sea Witch is very centralising, right? Junking attacks tend to be some of the strongest types of attack and the highest priority ones as well. And it comes with even more extra counters to itself than a junking attack normally might. Um, it gives a small amount of draw and next turn sifting. And, you know, this is a nice effect for you to have on your turn that really helps you build an engine with it. When you're getting slammed full of junk, you know, having draw and having that sifting makes it a lot easier to pair up the cards that you need to pair up together in order to start, like, actually executing your engine, whether that be, you know, the traditional village smithy or just finding those laboratories or whatever you need to do, right? Um, in a non-engine case, Sea Witch is still a very powerful choice for your terminal action. You know, you might get those decks where you only get to play one action card every turn, and Sea Witch is... 
a very solid choice in that case. Right, the junking attack is still strong. You know, the the whole um, being a duration is not as bad because it's not necessarily going to miss the shuffle. You know, it's giving you that sifting when your deck is already full of low quality cards. So the sifting is good. Um, pretty, pretty strong in that case. So Sea Witch, just like normal Witch on the turn you play, it's going to increase your hand size by one, right? It is giving you plus two cards in that case, but it is worth noting that next turn it is hand size neutral. Uh, you still, you know, end up with a five card hand after you've activated it or resolved its effect, sorry. Um, it's actually very hard and inefficient to try and use Sea Witch as a draw card if you're trying to just every turn regularly increase your hand size. Um, it's really, really difficult with Sea Witch because you only get your hand size increased by one on every other turn, right? Like one extra card in your hand across two turns. That's like half of a card draw every turn on average. Uh, so I find it's usually better just to assume that Sea Witch is not really a draw card, even though technically it might be. Uh, one size hand size every other turn. That's just bad, bad draw, right? However, if the cards that you are discarding on the second turn are useless, like you're discarding estates or curses, cards you really don't care about and you're not going to play, then when you think about it, Sea Witch kind of is a little bit incomparable in Draw to Wharf, right? You get the plus one hand size this turn, and then you get the effective equivalent of two cards next turn. Um, this usually only tends to be the case when there's no trashing, I mean, over time, if there is trashing, then you may find with Sea Witch that you have to start actually discarding good cards or playable cards, even if those are coppers, right? But if there's no trashing at all, then you indeed might actually just find that you keep drawing curses. Now, when I say it's sort of comparable to Wharf, obviously this is nowhere nearly a, a draw card like Wharf is. You know, Wharf is giving you the plus buy. You do actually draw the cards. Um, but, you know, it is worth noting that discarding two cards isn't actually a downside if you were never going to play those cards anyway, and then you are sort of getting the plus two cards next turn. Sea Witch is worth noting synergizes very nicely with duration draw, stuff like Caravan and Wharf, and that is because you can choose to resolve those first. Right, when you have multiple start of your next turn um, duration cards to resolve, you do get to pick the order. So you can draw up first with Caravan and Wharf, and then you have more cards to choose from when you're choosing to discard. It makes it a lot easier to discard the worst things in your deck, um, which is when Sea Witch is going to be at its most effective. Right, the thing that can the thing you have to think about with Sea Witch compared to stuff like Cellar or Warehouse, you know, cards that are dedicated to sifting, is that Sea Witch's sifting must happen at the start of your turn. Whereas with stuff like Warehouse and Cellar, you do get to draw up a bit first potentially, and then use the sifting when it might be more effective, but you don't get to wait on the effect like you do with those cards. So how does Sea Witch really compare to other similar junkers? So this so far has generally been considered to be roughly on par with both Witch and Old Witch, and in fact these three Witches, Witch, Sea Witch and Old Witch, make up a a triad of like elite junkers with similar power level. You know, when Sea Witch came out, it was very obvious that first of all, this card was kind of like Witch. You know, literally, it does the same thing initially, plus two cards each other player gains a curse. So the comparisons were immediate, you know, and people generally they would say at the moment that they all feel roughly similar, but of course some are going to be stronger than others in different circumstances. Um, it is worth noting there is a fourth witch card called Young Witch, but it is nowhere nearly along the same power level as these at all, you know, so we don't count that one. Sorry, Young Witch. So while we can compare these three witch cards, the reality is, is that in most games you do not have to do a comparison at all because only one of them will be available at a time. Uh, you can find games where multiple are available, of course, and if you do get to choose, then Sea Witch on the whole, people believe, tends to be better. Like, this is a stronger card than the other witches, unless the trashing is very, very fast. So if you can get thin very quickly... Normal Witch might be better than Sea Witch, because if you can play it every turn reliably, then you're going to be giving out junk twice as fast as Sea Witch. But also, if your deck gets very, very thin, then the whole draw to discard to sifting effect of Sea Witch is less useful, because you're not going to be finding bad cards to discard pass. 
And of course, with good thinning, once all the junk has run out and everyone's like trashed it and got rid of it, the other two witches just make for better engine pieces long term. Right, if you take away the cursing bit because all the curses ran out, Sea Witch is just a worse like draw card than Witch and um, Old Witch potentially. You know, Old Witch is much, much better as plus three cards. You know, you could argue that there's reliability benefit from Sea Witch, even though it's not a draw card at that point, but generally card draw is going to be better than sifting, right? Like, for the most part. So in summary, Sea Witch is just a very, very strong card. It is probably around the top 5% of all cards. Now, that's pretty good. If you ignore the landscapes, then the top 5% is going to be 20-something cards. You know, and Sea Witch can fit within there, I would say. I think all of them are roughly around that. Maybe Airbus are slightly lower. You know, I mean, what's a few positions in ranking even mean anyway? So I think they're all, those three witches are all around about the top 5% of kingdom cards you know very very strong uh, now you should see the witch video if you want more information about junkers in general particularly talking about you know what impact player counts have um on these cards so you know there's no point in repeating that see which is very very similar to which in that regard and i've already done a video on that you know if, if you want to know more about these unconditional junkers then that also draw a little bit you know definitely do watch that video and of course, it is worth noting, and I, I hate to mention it in every, you know, card that discards. There's a lot of cards that discard out there. Sometimes it's beneficial to discard cards. There are actually slightly more combos now than there used to be, thanks to Hinterland's second edition. You know, but sometimes you can make discarding cards actively beneficial rather than a disadvantage. And of course, Sea Witch just gets even better in that case. But I'm not really going to go into detail in this because... We'd talk about it in a huge, huge range of videos if we did. And, you know, it's more, more worth talking about with those other cards specifically, you know, like Trail and Village Green and so on. And so that's about it. All I really have to say about Sea Witch, you know, it is very similar to Witch with these little things that make it different and probably slightly better. Oh, I guess it is worth noting, just thinking about it now, you know, there was simulations done just to see what was better and in a basic like big money context see which blows the other two witches clean out the water like it's just way way better in those cases um but when are you gonna find games that are just big money but you have your choice of which right like they rarely show up really let's be honest um oh and it does have three types so you know seaside second edition has made courtier a little bit better i guess um, anyway, you know, that's not really that important. So um, what we're going to do is going to head over to the online client. We're going to generate some games with Sea Witch in it, and we're going to see what sort of impact it has on these games. So no particular special setup here. There is Charlatan, so we do have special curses. So that's actually quite interesting. That makes cursing attacks a little bit worse in general because they're not completely dead cards. Uh, let's see, we've got Anvil and Quarry, that's a nice combo, you get to play the Quarry before the Anvil to uh, gain better cards, you can gain cards costing up to 6, or you could even gain King's Court and Forges, in fact. So the big problem here is, where's the village? Well, it's only King's Court, which is a very, very strong village, but you've got to get there. The only trashing are Replace and Forge which are expensive, you know, replace does not get rid of your coppers or your curses. Forge can, eventually. Uh, the problem is the only draw is King's Court combined with either Sea Witch, you know, which is a duration, or like you play it on Secret Passage, and that's about it. So it's actually really, really hard to draw here, and that's a problem for Forge. Um, and it's really, really easy to get thrown full of junk as well. I would love to be King's Courting Sea Witches, you know, drawing a bit and then like forging a lot. Um, but the problem is you do have to start your turn colliding King's Courts and then like hitting a Sea Witch and then like getting to forge. And you don't really want a King's Court of Forge because you're forced to gain zero cost cards like on the next two plays. Like you trash a load of cards, you gain something, you've got to play Forge twice more um, and it's non-optional and you have to then gain zero cost cards, uh, which, <laughs> which sort of undoes a little bit of the forging that you did potentially, unless you can forge multiple things, that is, you know. 
so that's a problem. Tiara is nice. We don't actually need two quarries. We can Tiara the one quarry and like King's Court suddenly becomes very, very cheap. Uh, what is it? You get two coins and it goes down to three in cost and then you can like Anvil and potentially get one. So that's really good. The Anvil can discard the curses with Charlatan. Um, I think Sea Witch is very good here. The question mainly becomes, is it worth trying to build to King's Court or can you Sea Witch money fast enough? Long term, you know, the Forge, there's the Tiara. You know, if you can get enough King's Courts, you could even get like a Charlatan and King's Court it for money. Right, Tiara is nice, but are you when are you going to be getting the Golds? Well, having said that, there is Court here, right? And Court here on Sea Witch if you can pull that off, is actually, you know, really a lot of money that you can King's Court and you can gain golds that you can then like Tiara and stuff. So I think the engine has huge payoff. I guess the money doesn't work because there's Sea Witch slowing you down as well. So I think you, you know, you can suddenly get very thin with Forge that makes it easier to pull off King's Court stuff. So I think the engine works here and Sea Witch is critically important here. Um, you might even get some secret passages. I don't know how good Anvil really is. What's it gaining? Quarry, Tiara, Secret Passage. I'll probably just buy those. Actually, no, Quarry's better because there's... Sorry, I meant Anvil, not Quarry. Quarry's very good here. Anvil is nice because of Quarry. But you know what? I could wait on the Anvil for a little bit. I think I'd rather open Silver Quarry and try and get to Sea Witch as fast as possible. Even though the curses aren't as good, Sea Witch is still very good. And it's going to be critically important because it actually does act like draw, because there's King's Court. I know I said it's not real draw, but actually it kind of is. And I guess you can King's Court court here and get extra actions if you need a village as well. You know, so it's a very, very long engine that suddenly someone explodes. They suddenly get very thin and they get these King's Courts and they go mad. Right, this is a very lopsided game is what I'm thinking. Um, but it takes a while to get there. So Sea Witch, very, very good here, I think. Um, yeah, just incredible power card. No matter what strategy you go for, you're looking to get Sea Witch as soon as possible there, um, very clearly in my mind. What have we got here? No special setup at all. And we have Shantytown as the only village, which is very bad. And then we have Wharf to draw, Sea Witch potentially. There's also Watchtower as draw to X. That's interesting. Uh, Corsair technically gives you an extra card on your next turn. We've got Steward to trash, that's very good trashing. We have Bishop to trash, that's less good. We have Mine to trash, that's very bad. Um, it is worth noting there is Corsair. And how do we get money otherwise? Um, mm, we sort of don't, right? There is Steward, but getting the actions for that is quite hard. And, you know, there is Bishop, but again, that's hard. Is Corsair quite nasty here? Like, you sort of have to play with silver and gold payload, unless you can get a lot of stewards. Um, but Wharf is very good draw. Uh, there is Watchtower to block Sea Witch, it is noted. You know, Watchtower is actually defence. However, because there is Wharf, it seems like it's very hard to actually um, draw with Watchtower, making it a lot worse in your deck. And also, you know, there is Steward to get thin as well. So I'm probably opening Steward and Silver, I think. Yeah, it probably is just Silver. I guess there is an argument for Steward and Shantytown, and if they collide, who cares, right? Maybe that's better, Shantytown Steward, and you just don't care about a collision because you weren't really buying much anyway. Um, if they collided and it was a Silver. So I'd probably do that, actually. Um, and is the Shantytown split really important here? Like, maybe its terminal space is limited enough. Would you just not buy Sea Witch at all and just be doing wharves with Shantytown, some steward money, and just try to, like... Oh, you can play Corsairs for money, can't you? Um, I think you want to get one Corsair down per turn um, just to really limit it. Like, maybe that's fine. Maybe you don't care, but, like... I'm just trying to think, what do you do otherwise? Like, are you using, like, a Corsair every turn, Wharves, Shantytown, Sir Steward, and you're just buying things to Bishop? That doesn't sound very good. I'm just thinking, like, you know, how are you building to province? You need to play 
like, three stewards and a corsair every turn to get enough money to buy province. I guess you can do that, right? Um, it is quite nasty. I suppose if you do that, you can then just, like, bishop provinces away and do a very thin golden deck made out of those cards. Like, you just don't have much draw. You just don't have the action space to play multiple wharves. So you have two wharves, two corsairs. That uses up two actions. You know, three stewards, that's five actions. You need... Um, and then a bishop, that's six actions. And if you get five shanty towns, that works. But you can't draw all of that, can you? You get three cards at the start of every turn from a Corsair and Wharf, and then you draw another one. So you've got like nine card hands, five shanty towns, three stu- uh, Yeah, I don't know how well it actually works, thinking about it. Um, it's very difficult. Um, it actually might be enough cards in hand. I don't think it is. I don't think you can get the draw up enough to do that. But maybe you drop the Corsair then, but the Corsair's not really using up card space, just action space. But I suppose Shantytown is card space, right? So yeah, this just seems very difficult. Um, even if you get lots of shanty towns, like they're really hard to draw past, right? Um, you're basically relying on the duration effect of Wharf and Corsair to kind of make your deck better, but you're really hoping with Corsair that you just shut down your opponents. Like, what's the alternative? I guess the alternative is that you wharf money, like, you go sea witch money, maybe, and you're just okay with losing treasures. Like, long-term, that feels very bad. Like, you're going to lose long-term because you can't add treasure fast enough. If someone gets off an engine and they play Corsair every turn... Like, eventually you lose doing that deck. But it's a case of how quickly can you get that set up. You know what? Steward is pretty fast trashing, but they're going to be, like, sea-witching you, and they're probably doing all right. Um, oh, man, you got to buy, like, Shantytown. I don't know. I guess sea-witch is good no matter what. Like, you want to get sea-witch early on. You can always bishop it later, I guess, right? Like, it's not that bad, really, but I do feel like Corsair is important enough. And if you lose the, the village split, like, it's just difficult to play this, I think. Um, oh, there is Watchtower for better draw. Maybe you ignore Wharf and you're actually doing... Ah, uh, yeah, this is it, right? Like, because you've got Shantytown, you can use Watchtower as draw. You may be able to prevent yourself from being attacked. And even though Corsair draws you up to a six card, you play a bunch of Shantytowns and you draw with Watchtower and you don't go for Wharf. Is this really a non-Wharf board? Is that good? It seems like it's a lot cheaper to set up. Um, Promises you have no plus buy, but you don't really need the plus buy anyway. Like, maybe I could actually see Watchtower because it makes it a lot easier to deal with having a lot of Shantytowns and you can play, like, Stewards for money to also reduce hand size, and then maybe you Watchtower. And you just try and buy a lot of shanty towns. I guess it's easier to do that if you have Wharf for an extra buy. So maybe you do get, like, one Wharf. And, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, maybe I do that instead. Um, I think you do get Sea Witch. Maybe just Bishop it later. Um, but, yeah. it's uh, Let's not talk too much more about that kingdom. But interesting. Um, sea Witch is perfectly fine there on that kingdom. Um, I can see you getting it. No problem. Right, what have we got here? So again, no particular special setup. Um, we do have Mining Village as a village. Do we have any trashing? There is Mint to trash your treasures. There is other sifting with Cellar. There is Wharf again. So we've always got Mining Village, Wharf, and you can get off a good Mint, right? And then you've got, um, you've got an Anvil to gain more Mining Villages and possibly Sea Charts as well. So drawing here is really easy. That makes me think that Tactician is not needed. You know, and you got plus buy from Wharf. Is Sea Witch good? Yes, you cannot trash curses on this kingdom. That makes Sea Witch very, very good. And we want to get it as soon as possible. So we're actually going to open... You know, there's an argument for Baron. Um, there's an argument for Mining Village and then just blow it up as well. And I think you definitely get a silver, but you really want Sea Witch. The curses are very important. You want to win the curse split. Once you've got those going, you can shift into anything else, really. Like, it's fine to have two Sea Witches in this deck. 
Um, although there's only so many mining villages, like you can pick up an anvil after your first shuffle and you can get the mining villages fairly handily after that. I think I would rather not have a baron, although you can't trash the estate. Baron's quite nice for money here. Uh, long term, you've got a mint. Actually, you know what? Having the baron is nice if you're going to buy a mint, I guess. It helps you bootstrap your way back up to um, six or at least five, you know, with an anvil and baron and get the bandit and then you get the golds, you know, and then you can mint the golds. But I'd rather not have bandit and mint, I guess. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, you might as well play them if you can. But otherwise, this is like a wharf engine. But you do start off doing the sea witching, first of all, and then eventually you get stuff. Cellar's nice here as well. Um, but you really want Wharf for, like, the plus buy. I, I could go either way on Baron. I do think long-term you struggle with the action space for it. Well, maybe you don't. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's fine to have one. But, yeah, this is definitely Sea Witch for the Junking. No problem at all on this board, I say. Um, very strong. Very clear that you want Sea Witch there. We've got Colony Platinum on this kingdom. So there is special setup. And let's see what we do. So we can build all the way up. Um, there is bank as well. Is there village? Yes, there's mining village. There is rabble and patrol and council room and technically sea witch is draw. There is also a minion deck, but minion feels like it's going to be very bad here. And the reason why minion is bad is because there is no trashing at all. There is smugglers and war chest as gainers. Um, war chest feels good enough. Smugglers feels like you're just going to be annoyed a lot if you go for smugglers. So, what are you drawing with? Rabble? Patrol? Council room? Like, they're all honestly decent. And there is Sea Witch. Uh, you cannot trash, so Sea Witch seems very strong here. And you're happy to run a couple of Sea Witches. You know, the, the curse is hose minion completely, if it wasn't hosed enough already. Um... You know, there could be an argument a minion might be nice for an early game, like discard if you have a bad hand, but honestly, Sea Witch's duration effect is giving you that extra reliability that seems good enough. I could see an argument for Council Room here, honestly. Um, is Pirate good? Uh, I don't know if it's even necessary, because you've got stuff like Bank, maybe, which is nice enough like to get extra payload, because you're going to be drawing a lot of coppers, in this deck, and Pirate can't gain banks, you know, and that's probably good enough. Is there any plus buy? There is only Council Room. You'd really like Platinums. Uh, honestly, Pirate's probably fine, I guess. Um, but, you know, well, yeah, maybe, maybe it's fine. Um, yeah, I, I think this is just, you're drawing a lot. You're using Sea Witches, and then you're probably... I mean, I'm probably just going to go Council Room just because I really, really need the draw. But honestly, stuff like Rabble is fine. In fact, Rabble top decks the Curses. Very bad for my opponent. So actually, maybe I don't want Council Room. Um, maybe I just want Rabble. But maybe our Council Room is fine because you want plus buy at some point. And maybe it's just like a bank thing. Um, if I get War Chest, I can use that to get more Mining Villages and then more draw and maybe even get like a Pirate or something at some point or stuff that I need. Um, as necessary. You can probably even get silvers later on to like trigger a pirate or whatever if you have to, or like duchies really late. Like, there's lots of things you can do. But the first thing for sure is I've got to get those curses out. So it's absolutely Sea Witch. Maybe with all the curses, something like Patrol is better um, as draw. It is going to be hard to draw reliably. You really just want to get a hand that's big enough. Um, I think you do get some mining villages. That pushes me more to a little bit more towards Council Room, I guess. Um, I think it's very, very hard to actually expect to reliably draw your deck, but you should be able to get off like really good banks with that, and then you shift into like platinums, right? And maybe you just have a bunch of golds with pirate or something. Um, so that's, I think, how I'm drawing the deck. War chest is nice, but you don't get it straight away. I mean, it's just slowly going to be like adding like extra villages and stuff if you need them and draw cards. And you just focus on like buying high value treasures. I think that's what you're doing. You want to be spending your buys on banks and platinums as much as you can, I think, and then like colonies. Um, but yeah, you do the cursing first. So Sea Witch, very, very powerful here again. Um, and I sort of expected this, you know, top 5% card. We're really going to be using Sea Witch every game, I think. Let's see if there's one where we don't. 
Um, so here there is potion as a special setup, and that's for university. Um, what do we have? So we've got wharf sea witch. We've seen that quite a lot here. Uh, the only well, there's university and nobles as villages. That is fine. There is also quarry, so we can technically. Well, no, we can't. We can't play university um, to get nobles after playing quarry. Um, but, you know, there is wharf engine here. There's university to gain wharves. You know, you've got sea witch as well. You've got money lender to trash, but you cannot trash the curses. There's also militia and there's torturer and there's rabble. You know, all this attack draw, really. Um, and there's pirate to get money if you want it. But really, university is key here. We want to... Ooh, well, there is money lender as well. <laughs> Do you open potion over money lender? Probably. I think we need to get the universities first as a priority over trashing with Moneylender. And although Sea Witch is important, I don't think you do Moneylender into Sea Witch and then get a potion. I think that's too slow, or is it? Or do you want to go university? Like, can you wait on university? Um, you are going to be university and a bunch of wharves. Eventually you'll be, like, buying nobles and stuff. Um, but it takes a while to get there, and you actually you're okay with a lot of universities, I think. So the alternative to that is that you skip university and you go for like money lender into sea witch into like nobles and stuff. But I don't know, man. Um, I think the deck's still okay even with a bunch of curses because you've got sea witch and wharf as well. You're going to be getting a lot of those. Torturer does not seem that great. You're going to run out of curses pretty soon and then it doesn't do anything. Rabble is still pretty nasty, but sea witch sort of undoes the problem. As does like wharf. You draw the stuff it top decks the curses and then you just discard past them. You know whatever. Um, so, you know, and then there's militia, so like torture is really bad, really, let's be honest. Um, yeah, so Sea Witch is another very clear winner on this board. Um, I'm really not sure about how soon you go for university. I intuitively think you should be getting it straight away. Um, but you know, Wharf Quarry is still good. You've even got Pirate to pick up quarries if you need to as well, right? You can gain a pirate with university, draw it, get a quarry next turn or whatever, you know, that's fine. Um, yeah, so anyway, I think the main point here really is that Sea Witch is just an exceptional card, right? Like, very, very strong. We wanted it on all these boards as we expected. Um, just incredible um, junking, and, you know, it helps deal with its own junking, so you get it as well. If your opponent buys it, you you might be buying it as well. Um, just seemed very strong here. And yeah, that's really all I have to say on Sea Witch. I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.